If you have a look up here, everyone, we can see some data for the experiment that we just did where we were trying to find the focal length of the convex lens and trying to show that it was the same as the focal length that we measured. In other words, showing that the thin lens equation is valid. This is actual data from this morning. And you can see, a lot of you were asking me a question just within the last few minutes about your image distance. You found that it was decreasing, but it was decreasing by less and less and less. In fact, by the last few pieces of data, you found that sometimes it was almost the same. You can see from this morning's data, or at least from one group this morning, that we had our last three pieces of data exactly the same. This is not bad data. Watch what happens when I go to actually do my analysis table now. This is my data. My analysis table is going to include my object distance, my image distance, but it's also going to include one over my object distance. And of course, the units for that are going to be um, one over centimeters. It's also going to include one over the image distance. And the units for that are going to be one over centimeters as well. Let's widen that out a little bit so, so I can see the whole thing. Okay, let's center those two columns here, just so it's a little bit tidier. And now here's, here's the crux of it. Okay, here's the real time-saving benefit of using Microsoft Excel. I want to find the value of 1 over DO. Well, I can put into my calculator 1 over 24. And it doesn't take that long to do. Or I can put into Microsoft Excel equals, press the equals button, 1 over 1 divided by, click on the 24, click on cell A2. It automatically puts A2 in there for me. Press enter, it calculates that value. Now, is that quicker than using a calculator? No, it's not. But if I do this, it's much quicker than using a calculator because I've just calculated 1 over DO for all of them. <laughs> Now, I can do the same thing with this one. For column D, I want to go 1 over, 1 over, and I want to go cell B2. Right? Click on cell B2. Click Enter. Click on it. Drag it down from the right-hand corner. And now I've got all the values of 1 over DI as well. Now let's go and plot the graph. In order to plot the graph, you want to highlight your y-axis column. Your y-axis column is 1 over di. So highlight that. It was already highlighted. You can just leave it highlighted. Or I just made a mistake and, and unhighlighted it. So i got to re-highlight it here. Let's go insert. Let's go scatter plot. Let's click the first option for scatter plot. Now it's going to give you a graph that looks like this. This isn't, isn't at all what we want to see. But if you take a look at the x-axis, the x-axis goes by trial number as opposed to by 1 over DO. So what I want to do is change that x-axis from my trial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to 1 over DO. In order to do that, I'm going to select data, click Edit, click on my x values, and then I want to highlight column C. Make sure you don't highlight this top here because you don't want the, the column heading, just the numbers. Click here, click OK, click OK. Now look at my graph. What were we expecting to see? A straight line that went downwards, right? What do we see here? A straight line that goes downwards. Now, I could have axes labeled. I could have a title and such. So I'm going to click on this first option under chart layouts. That's going to give me an option to put in the, put in the chart title. I can do that, right? I don't need to type that in for you guys. Okay, just replace chart title with the title of your graph, which will be 1 over di versus 1 over do. Your y-axis will be 1 over di with the units. Your x-axis will be 1 over do, do with the units. Get rid of this, just because I don't like seeing it. It doesn't really matter, but it's a little bit tidier without it, I think. And then finally, you're going to click on a data point, right-click, you're going to add a trend line, a linear trend line, which it automatically assumes, and then you're going to click Display Equation on Charge, down at the bottom. So there's my line of best fit, and there's my equation. Take a look at what the slope of my equation is, the slope of my graph is. What is it, 1.08, 1.09? What do we say it should be? 1? Yeah, sorry, I should, I should have said negative 1.09, right? What do we say it should have been? Negative 1. So are we pretty close to where we should have been there? Yeah, the group this morning that took this data, they thought they had bad, bad data because they had three numbers that were the same at the end. And you can see what that did to the graph. Get messed it up a little bit right here. 
giving three points right in a row there, but you can clearly still see the trend and you can clearly still see a straight line in this. Our y-intercept is 0 0.1001. So if our y-intercept is 0.1, And we know that our y-intercept is equal to 1 over the focal length. Then our focal length is equal to 1 over 0 0.1001. Somebody calculate that for me. It's going to be somewhere around 10. 9 point something. Okay, so 9.999. Okay, so we'll, we'll say it is 10. Now, the group this morning that got this data, they measured the focal length at the beginning of the activity to be 9.6 centimeters. So through their activity, they were able to get a focal length of 10 centimeters. They theoretically should have got 9.6 centimeters. Did they verify the thin lens equation? My guess would be yes. We would say the percent difference is equal to 10 minus 9.6 over 9.6. Absolute value of that times 100. 10 minus 9.6 is 0 0.4. What's 0 0.4 divided by 9.6? Uh, multiply that by 100, it works out to be 4.1. Did they verify the thin lens equation? Yes, because their percent difference was less than 10% and dramatically different. And this isn't, this isn't cooked up data. This isn't data that I made up. This is data that I picked at random from a group this morning. There were groups, I think, that had better data than this because there were groups that didn't have any are the numbers that were exactly the same at the end. They, this worked out to be really good, and it was purely random, and it wasn't the best set of data we had this morning. So you go ahead and do this. You get a slope of somewhere around negative 1.0. You can be pretty confident that you have pretty good data. Okay, then I want you to uh, find your focal length, do your percent difference. Listen, if you get a, focal, a, uh, a slope that's close to negative 1, you're going to get pretty good data for your y-intercept as well. It's... It's just going to happen that way. How long did this take me to do? Seven, seven minutes and 18 seconds. If I was doing this for myself, and I wasn't trying to demonstrate it for you and explain it, it would have taken me maybe two to three minutes. So you've just done the entire lab analysis in two to three minutes, if you're comfortable with Microsoft Excel. Okay?